your purpose goes beyond everything that you can see now. And if you would just wait on your father and learn to be content in all things, satisfied in all things, where you are right now, understanding that God has a purpose, that everything is working for your good, then you're going to reach that. Then you're going to see those things. Then you are going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What's up YouTube? Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are new here, then welcome to my channel. Please like and subscribe. I pray that something is said that will help you motivate you today. Today we're going to be talking about the dreamer's vulnerability. And I know you're probably like, what is the dreamer's vulnerability? Well, this is what makes every dreamer vulnerable. This is what makes every body that has vision and that goes after the things that they desire in their heart. This is the thing that can really make or break the dreamer. This is the thing that can really take you to a place of detriment or to a place of prosperity to a place of perplexity or to a place of purpose. This is what we're gonna talk about today. So really this just came about from me watching a movie. I actually watched this movie right before I was going to Disney. So about a month ago, me and my family, we went to Disney. It was so much fun. My son turned 10 years old. So we just wanted to, you know, just celebrate him in a different way and just to allow him the adventures of Disney World. So before we left, I actually was like on this kind of thing. I was super excited. I was probably more excited than he was, but I wanted to watch, you know, different Disney films. So one of the Disney films that I watched was The Little Mermaid. And I know you know the story of Ariel, right? She was the mermaid in the story and she had dreams and she had aspirations of being with, you know, a guy that she saw from the ocean. One day she saw him on a ship and she just really desired to be with him. And you know, she wanted it so badly that she was willing to do almost anything to get to him. And what was interesting was that, you know, she was a very smart young lady. She had everything, you know, her dad was the king of the sea. She had so much right in front of her, but there was still something that she desired deep within her heart that drew her from, you know, the responsibilities and even the commands of her father and took her away and brought her towards this evil witch, Ursula. This lady comes by and she's like, oh yeah, I know you see this guy and you really love him. And you know, she was talking good to Ariel. It sounded good to her. And she ended up signing her name and you were, you were sitting there watching like, really Ariel, you're gonna let this lady trick you. She told her from the get go. She said, if you don't do this within a certain amount of days, you're gonna be mine. Your soul is gonna be mine. Basically she's like, you're gonna be mine forever. I'm gonna have you in my garden of sea people and Ariel's still like okay sure I'm gonna do it <laughs> you know she signed her name on the line and I'm like man that's crazy so long story short at the end of the movie her dad actually came to her rescue and was able to defeat the evil witch Ursula after all this happened she was able to get legs right because that, that was the whole thing from the witch like I'll give you legs so you can get you know walk around on the on the land and be with this man and that was really why she basically sold her soul. So, you know, at the end of it, her father eventually, yeah, he didn't, you know, he didn't want her to have that at the time, right? Because he didn't think that that's what she needed at the time. And so at the end, he was the one who gave her the ability to have legs and to walk on land. And that's what she did. And she married Prince Eric, which was so beautiful at the end, right? So that is what really brought me to this subject because I thought about, you know, how many of us, you know, just daily people really get into a place where we really desire something that maybe we don't even realize that we're not ready to have, but because we want it so bad, we are willing to do anything, even if it means losing our only soul to get that thing. And what it is, is that we get to a place where we have a lack of patience. And when you have a lack of patience, it is almost like you have a lack of trust in you know, what has always been told to you and what you always believe that God would do for you. It's almost like you're like, God, you're not, you're not doing this fast enough. And you take the place of God in your life and you do whatever you want. 
Now, lack of patience is not the dreamer's vulnerability, but let's talk about what the actual dreamer's vulnerability is. So when you are getting into a place where you're looking at things and you're seeing things that you know you really desire, but you know that you cannot have them, this is what we call the lust of the eye. Now this is one of the three ways of attack that the enemy has on the people of God from the very beginning, right? Adam and Eve, he did this very same thing. When Jesus was pushed into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, these are the three things that he tried to entice him with in the wilderness. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is what we call them. However, I know sometimes the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh can look a little different, but when we talk about the differences between the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh are things that are gonna satisfy your flesh. So anything like sexual immorality or anything that would gratify any kind of lust or greed that you might have, even things that would satisfy your flesh like food, gluttony, things like that, those are the lusts of the flesh. These are things that are gonna, that are gonna satisfy your flesh, right? But then when you have the lust of the eyes, it is literally when you're looking at something and you know that, or you may not realize it at the time, but you are so almost um, inundated with what you see that you disregard God's word on that thing for your life. So the lust of the, the eyes could be, you know, you desiring something or someone um, that, that you shouldn't have, like a married man or a married woman, or, you know, you having the lust of the eyes towards different possessions like, you know, um, envying people's cars or their houses or things like that. And again, you're willing to do anything that it takes to get those things. Now, just, just think about how I said that at the end of this whole scenario with Ariel, and we're not gonna be talking about Ariel the whole time, but I just wanted to throw it in there because to me, like I said, this is how I even even started this topic. But when you when you go back to it, like I said, at the end, Ariel didn't even realize that her father had the ability to give her what she wanted the whole time, but she didn't want to wait for it, right? So that lets me know that it just reminded me that, you know, sometimes we do go through things in life where, yeah, we, we have prayed for different things or we have sought out different things and it seems like it hasn't come quick enough. It seems like, you know, when is this thing going, going to come to fruition? And we're continuously asking God and we're even questioning him and we get to a place like I said where we're you know we're refuting those things that he, he had already told us and now we feel like we have to take the matters into our own hands and we end up in a worse place than we were before have you ever been into a worse place than you were before because you, you thought that you could do things your own way well let me remind you today that your father has the ability to give you everything that you desire right now but remember he knows exactly what you can handle right now he knows exactly what you are ready for he knows what you have been preparing for and at the right time in due season the bible says then you will reap if you faint not but you can't faint you can't get to a point where you're looking at something and you want it so bad that you're willing to disregard his word so the question is how do we combat the lust of the eyes how do we combat you know getting into those positions where we're seeing things and you know we can't help but to desire those things well the solution is to set your eyes on the things above the bible tells us in the book of colossians to set our affections on the things above because when you learn to set your eyes and your minds and your desires on the things above then you won't get distracted by the things that you don't have yet or the things that you've been asking for or the things that don't seem like they have been turning out for you the right way when you learn to put your eyes on god the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and all of these things will be added unto you see all that that girl had to do was just to remember that she was already you know royalty she already had placement that she had responsibility in that kingdom and that all she had to do was just to go about doing doing those things that was expected of her and what she was desiring would surely come. You know, um, I believe that in our positions that
that if we remember that God wants the very best for us, that he really desires for us to have the best, you know, his thoughts about us are more than the grains of the sand around the sea. And he's always thinking thoughts of good towards us, that we will prosper and that we would have an expected end. So if we truly believe that, then we would be willing to wait. Now, I was in a time of prayer one morning recently, and I was just, you know, thinking about some of these things. And the, the Lord took me to a passage of scripture that I had never seen before. And it was in the book of Judges. Now, you know, this story was about the uh, man of valor named Gideon. He was a great warrior. He fought with the 300 men, you know, and he, he subdued the Midianites. And when I was here in Judges 8, towards the end, I recognized a place where there were a group of people after he had won this war, they really wanted Gideon to rule over them and to, you know, be their um, king. They're like, you know, we want to do whatever we can for you. Like, can we, can you be our king? And he's like, no. Then he thought about it and he was like, you know what, but could you guys gather, you know, a bunch of rings of gold? and make me an ephod, which is a sort of garment. And, and they did that. But the Bible also says that later on, this ephod became a snare to Gideon and his family, almost like he began to idolize that ephod over a period of time there could be so many reasons why you know he even allowed this to happen but you know i was just thinking about wow you know he was in a position um he was hearing from the lord he had you know went into this war with these 300 guys that first started with so many thousands of men and you know he won this war with only 300 he had been successful he was really in the right standing let me say but then he got to a place where the lust of his eyes took over you know what his reality really was maybe he had a lack of patience um i don't know what it is i mean he could have been king he didn't want to be but you know he still had a desire you know to have something of what of value to him right and and that is also a lust of the eyes lusting upon things that are of value because maybe they make you feel a certain way or give you a certain amount of esteem and this thing became an idol in Gideon's life this is what we have to be careful of because again when we set our affections above on the things of the Lord on the good things the things of virtue um, all of those wonderful things, then we won't allow ourselves to abide in those things. See, Jesus said in John and 15, he said, abide in me. He said, if you keep my word and you keep my commandments, then me and my father, we will come together into you and we will make you our home. See, God wants to abide with us. He wants to fellowship with us. He wants to sup with us. And if we are so full of other things and idolatry and desires of of different things of the world because i realize that the world makes it so easy you know you have these desires that you want and i realize that you have to put these things in their respective places because god is always first he always comes first and not only that it's like when you have those other things you have to remember it you can only produce so much fruit and even if you produce fruit outside of christ that fruit will not last that fruit will be very it will be very evident that that fruit um, did not come from the Lord. And so this is what we desire today. We desire not to be vulnerable in our dreaming, in our ambitions, in our going forward in life, because it's okay to have dreams. It's okay to go after those things that God has said that you're able to do. But during those times when you're going after those things, let me remind you today to keep God in his rightful place in your life, to remember that you have a place in his kingdom, to remember that us being obedient to God is so much better than us, you know, just sacrificing um, time with him versus time spent doing so many other things. And this is, this is something that I had to remind myself also that, you know, these things are great and these things are wonderful, but we have a soul that we really need to make sure that we're working out our salvation. Your purpose goes beyond everything that you can see now. And if you would just wait on your father and learn to be content in all things, satisfied in all things, where you are right now, understanding that God has a purpose, that everything is working for your good, then you're going to reach that. Then you're going to see those things. 
then you are going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I just want to encourage you today to stay um, stay faithful towards God because there is a great reward for that in the end. There is a great reward for that even now here on the earth. So just continue to walk by faith and not by sight and not to allow the things that you see uh, to cause you to get out of the will of the Father. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a lot more in store for you. So please continue to follow and subscribe and like and comment. And let me know what kind of vulnerabilities have you had in the past as a dreamer or if you have had vulnerabilities today. Thanks again. I love you so much. I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Bye.